that, he is the host of Nat Geo Star Talk, whose latest bestseller is Letters from an Astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson, everybody. Disappoint with the tie. Yeah, I'm glad. You never disappoint with the tie. The universe is how vast. Many, how many universe ties do you have? About, uh, You're like Trump has all the red ones. You have all. He the... occasionally wears a blue one. I have right. noticed, but right. uh, not as often as he wears a red tie. No, but uh, you... so this tie I have about 109. Wow. Yeah. You know it, right? What, about 109. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. Could be 111. No, it was or... exactly 109. Exactly. You're a very exact person. <laughs> you know, uh, your book is so interesting. I noticed a lot of the letters that people write to you, and this is a lot of the, you know, mm -hmm. you, you care to, you're very good with your fans. You yeah, want to know what they think. It was what I was doing under the hood for decades while right. I had this public persona of talking about the universe. There's right. these personal, private things, that, issues that people had. And they wrote to me about it. Okay, and one of the big ones that you get is people are asking you to sort of mediate between, oh, gosh, I, I want to believe in God, but I don't want to not believe in science. Is there a way we can square that circle? What, what I get a lot. You... I get a lot of those letters. And what do you tell them? I like the way you said square that circle. That's very mathematical of you. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I, I... <laughs> you know me, Doc. I am all about the science. <laughs> so uh, what happens is I think people are, might be raised in one or another religious tradition, and then they start learning science. Then they find places where the science conflicts. And I think most people have never met a scientist, much less no. can claim one as their friend. So they see me kind of as their friend, who could then offer perspective, or at least shine some kind of cosmic luminosity on what next decision they want to make about how to reconcile or not their religious traditions with science. Enlightened religious people don't have an issue. You know, if Jesus is your savior, no one is going to take that away from you in a country that protects the free expression of religion. But if you're going to come around and say, my religious text tells me the universe is 6,000 years old, and I'm going to stick it in your science classroom, I have an issue with that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, uh, because, because... That doesn't really help, though. Well, well no, no. It, it, you're it, basically it, saying, I'm coming down on the side of science. No, however... Tough no, shit. However, I, when I, people write to me, I see it as a contract of communication. Right. If I just speak and not care where they're coming from, no, then I'm just lecturing. You're letting them down nicely. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, no, no. A, it's like, you know what, people sometimes say, they love this in America, they say, everything happens for a reason, which I always think of you, because I'm like, that is so fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not. Yeah. Everything does not happen yeah. for a right. Am that, I right about that, that? That is so correct. Thank you okay. so much. Because Most of what I people try think to be happens nice. for a reason it, is random, right. and we create reason in it. Also, it's elitist, because it's something you can say when you live in an affluent society, where you have a lot of, you know, enough money to change jobs or meet new people. You live in a city. There's like a billion people who live on a shit pile every day, yep. and nothing happens for a reason for them. They're born into grinding party and they die in poverty. Yeah, it, they it, die in it. Definitely an elitist point of view. Thank but what, you. what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am known to agree with you. There uh, you go. No, no. So I, I just wanted to say that the, the contract I have. It's an unstated contract between those me and those who write to me. Is that I will care about where they're coming from and how they're thinking and what receptors they might have for arguments I might present. So, for example, in the case of the religious letters, I say that there are three truths in the world. There's your personal truth. No one is going to take that from you. Jesus is your savior. Muhammad is your last prophet. These are truths. No one is going to take that from you. Then there's like a political truth. That's just what becomes true when it's repeated enough times, okay? But then there's the objective like truth. Like those first two you just said. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's the objective truth, which are the methods and tools of science are invented and designed to establish. Right. And those are true whether or not you believe in them. And so I say you can keep your 6,000-year universe, but understand that that's a personal truth that you get from your personal religion. If you rise to power and have control over laws and legislations in a pluralistic land, it is a recipe for disaster if you're going to take your personal truths and create laws that have to then apply to everyone. So, the world is, uh, The world is, is not 6,000 years old, right? It is so not 6,000 okay. years old, right. yeah. 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 So, we used to just have to deal with that. In the last few years, we've also had to deal with people who think it might be flat. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 which is stupid. So, so uh, 
So, I, so I've, I've said this before. I think the, the rise of the flat earthers is evidence of two things. One, we live in a country that protects free speech. Two, we have a failure of our educational system. So I, I, I don't want to run after all the flat earthers. I'm going to turn around back to the school system and say, where has it failed in such a way that a full-grown adult coming out of this system can think the earth, the earth is flat? That's where I'm focused. I agree. Right. And so you're on the side of a fact is a fact, get over it. I'm on the side that Earth is round. Yes. Right. yes. <laughs> okay. But I bring this up no, no, because... No, no, because... Wait, wait, wait. Facts can be anywhere. It's this collection of facts which, when put together in wise and sage ways, become knowledge. But... So I'd rather speak of right. knowledge rather than facts. But I bring this up because yeah. you got into some hot water recently. There was a mass shooting. You tweeted something about it, which was true. Yeah. Okay, if we're going to be facts or facts, yeah. people. I defended you, by the way. Yeah, I did catch that on, 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 online. Yeah, I caught that. Well, where was my thank you note? Oh. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you could have reached out a little. And, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, so... Okay, anyway, my point being, you, what you said was true. Yes. Okay, uh, you weren't trying to... Hurt, you even said uh, the USA horrifically... Lo you went out of your way to be nice about it and then said, but the fact is that on average... Across any 48 hours, we lose 500 to medical errors, 300 to the flu, blah, blah, blah. Our emotions respond more to spectacle than to data. Now, I know what it's like to have the Twitter mob come after you. Yeah. I don't blame you for Apollo. I get it. I have to do But you were right. Facts uh, matter. They, they do matter. Uh, However, so do emotions. We are emotion... We're an emotional species. Well, so... so so were I to do that again, I, I would have put some, t some, some distance, time distance, between that tweet, so, because people are, okay. are bereaved. Right. And so I wanted to have some... I, All right. Retrospectively, that's what I would have done. All right. I want to ask about an explorer, because I know you want to go to Mars. We're not going to have that fight again, as we always do. Don't get me started. Uh, don't get I me Mars started. Right here. I know... Yeah, Mars in the face, right, right there. Okay. <laughs> well... I bring Mars wherever I go. Okay, what? Talk about a shithole country, Mars and said. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if we're going to make... All right, we're not going to have that argument again, but... So you admired the explorers, as we all do. We had Columbus Day earlier mm -hmm. this week. Okay. An explorer extraordinaire, you would agree? We would all agree as an explorer? He's an important explorer, yes. I, uh, but, but... Sure. Yes. Yeah. Or else we'd be doing this show in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be so much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you, yes. Uh, and, I mean, the balls to get on the ocean when they did... They thought it was flat, the world. Well, his, his crew, uh, but not him. He, he was smart enough to know. Yeah. That the world was not flat. Was not, fl was not okay. flat, yeah. But yeah. still, in that little rickety boat, it's less the size of... The, it's like the size of this room. <laughs> And it, it took uh, it audacity. Uh, yes. Unbelievable balls. No question so, uh, about it. So was he an asshole? And gonads, yes. You know, okay. I, probably to have that kind of balls, you're not going to be Mr. Nice Guy all the time. So, of course, a lot of people say we should tear down his statues and blah, 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 because he brought diseases, and he did. I read in Jill Lepore's book, Haiti had three million people before the Europeans came, and then it was 5,000. So, okay, disease, he didn't try to do that. And then slaves. He took slaves. But so did our founding fathers. The Bible is cool with slaves. Neither Jesus nor his dad, God, are against them. <laughs> what? <laughs> <I'm not touching. laughs> it's not, not his dad? I'm not touching this one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying... He was a 15th century man. The founders had slaves. The Bible had slaves. R. Kelly still has them. <laughs> you, you, I'm just saying. <laughs> Columbus Day, weigh in, discuss. I'm not touching this one either. Really? <laughs> I think we need, to, we, need to, we need to be aware of the past of past atrocities and we need to be sensitive yes. to it. But I think we're. But they almost... weren't. We're almost overdosing on history. We're, we're mining the past constantly for fresh outrage. Yes. I don't think Christopher Columbus should be canceled. I think we have to have <laughs> a society you. that's mature enough to handle moral ambiguity. Uh, nice to hear yeah. that. Yes. I, I have a, uh, yes. I have an unorthodox perspective yes, please. on Columbus Day. Yes. Uh, you know, it, it was Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand mm -hmm. sent the man to the New World. Okay. 
And they gave a satchel of flags that were Spanish flags and put them wherever you come. So I don't know why Columbus Day to this day is celebrated by Italians. They had nothing to do with his voyage. <laughs> it's, it's, it should be and, and if they did, more people than just a few in Brooklyn would be speaking Italian in the Western Hemisphere.